Hey what's up guys Tati is here. Hope you're all doing well and in today's video I'm going to be show you how to optimize AMD Radeon settings. There are two of the biggest PC GPU manufacturers to date, well, that is until Intel's GPUs are any good. One's the Green Tank Nvidia and the other's the Red Beast AMD. In this video, I will tell you about the best AMD settings that you can configure in the Radeon control panel to improve performance. But before that, I ask you to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Now before we go diving into the Radeon software and start tweaking some settings, let's make sure your GPU drivers are up to date. AMD releases crucial GPU updates almost every month. These updated packages contain crucial fixes and performance improvements for the latest games. Sometimes AMD adds a feature or two geared towards improving gaming and productivity. So, let's start this AMD settings video by updating your GPU drivers first. Open AMD Adrenaline Radeon software from the desktop or Windows search. Once opening it, check out the Drivers and Softwares section on the top right. Click on the Check for Updates button under it. If you'll have updated, it'll inform you. Then, you can proceed to download the required updates. Once the drivers finish downloading, click on the Install button, and an AMD utility will take you through the installation process. After you're done, simply reboot your PC, now you're all locked and loaded to tweak their settings and get the most out of your AMD GPU. Let's start optimizing the best AMD settings for Radeon Control Panel. Now that we're rocking the latest AMD drivers, it's time to start tweaking the best AMD settings in Radeon Control Panel. We'll be tweaking the global settings, so these take effect across every game you play. However, you can also apply the same settings in any particular game you like instead of enforcing them across the board in global settings. Alright, let's get to it then. Radian Anti-Lag, Enabled. Radian Anti-Lag is an AMD feature that works similarly to NVIDIA's Reflex or Low Latency mode. You should keep Anti-Lag enabled to reduce input lag and have better latency in games. This feature works best in competitive FPS shooters like CSGO, Dota, or Valorant. AMD Radian Chill. Disabled. AMD Radian Chill isn't a chill setting to turn on at all. It drastically reduces your GPU output to favor cooler temperatures. Less GPU output means worse gaming performance. If you're struggling with high temperatures, I suggest checking for alternate solutions before resorting to this setting. Radiant Boost. Disabled. As good as Radiant Boost sounds, it isn't something you want to turn on. How Radiant Boost boosts your FPS is dynamically lowering your resolution to favor higher FPS. It's definitely not worth it as graphics become a mess and you can barely make out characters in-game. That said, this setting does work great in very few titles, so keep an eye out. Image Sharpening. Your Call. Image Sharpening is a nifty little tool by AMD that lets you sharpen the textures of in-game scenes. It's particularly great if you're using Thai anti-aliasing as it helps restore the crispiness to textures. However, in some games, this can make things look worse. So check first before committing to applying sharpness to your games. Radian Enhanced Sync. Enable. You can keep Radian Enhanced Sync enabled if you don't want to use V-Sync. V-Sync introduces input lag to your game and makes it choppy in many cases. However, using Enhanced Sync will reduce screen tearing in games without really increasing input lag like traditional V-Sync. Wait for Vertical Refresh, always off. Wait for Vertical Refresh is basically turning on V-Sync across all your games. It caps your FPS to your monitors, refresh rate and introduces input lag and latency issues in games. I don't recommend turning it on. Frame Rate Target Control. Disabled. Frame rate target control caps your in-game FPS to a particular value you set here. Unless you need to cap FPS for a particular game, keep it disabled to avoid reducing your game's performance unnecessarily. Anti-aliasing. Use application settings. Driver level anti-aliasing isn't really worth it. The in-game options work great, so no need for any other AA from Radian settings. Use application settings is the best option to select here. Anti-aliasing method. Multi-sampling. Even though we won't be using any driver level anti-aliasing, here you can set the anti-aliasing method to multi-sample. Multi-sample improves graphics quality significantly while keeping the performance impact to a minimum. Morphological anti-aliasing. Disabled. Morphological anti-aliasing causes stuttering and FPS drops in games. Not many people are a fan of this setting and for good reason. Steer clear of it and keep it disabled. Anisotropic filtering, disabled. 
almost every DirectX 11 onwards game takes care of anisotropic filtering natively so there's no need to enable it in radiant settings. Texture filtering quality, performance. Texture filtering quality is the best set to performance mode. This is a good mix between visuals and performance and makes the best use of your AMD GPU powers. Surface format optimization, enabled. Surface format optimization you can enable to smoothen in-game textures. However, it can break some game's textures and make them muddly. Instead of keeping it enabled globally, I recommend enabling it for particular games in Radiant Panel. Tessellation Mode, Override Application Settings. We'll need to override tessellation mode from the Radiant Settings to unlock tessellation level settings. Maximum tessellation level. Off. Disabling driver level tessellation will have a major impact on the performance of games. It'll disable any sort of driver level tessellation from making performance noticeably better in games. Oppingle triple buffering. Disabled. Oppingle triple buffering should be disabled to avoid any issues with performance. Since it's also a part of vSync, there's no use enabling it here. Reset shader cache. Perform reset. Reset shader cache is a great utility available inside the Radiant settings. It helps clear out shader cache that builds up over time and helps improve performance in games. However, sometimes older shader cache can get corrupted causing problems. So it's great to reset it every now and then to ensure games run buttery smooth. And now I want to show you how I set up my video card myself. If you need maximum performance in games, you can configure it the way I configured it. And there you have it, folks. This was my special video about using the best settings and settings in the Radian control panel. Every adjustment made in this video is aimed at providing you with the best possible performance without compromising the visual effects. So, I hope it helps you squeeze that extra bit of performance out of your AMD GPU. Well, that's all for me, I hope I helped you. If yes, then I ask you to subscribe to the channel and like this video. This inspires me to create new videos for you. See you soon, friends.